Hi, hey, welcome back to the channel. Today's video, we'll look at the JSD Solar 24 volt, 100 amp hour battery. This battery is 24 volt. It's a lithium ion phosphate battery, as you can see here. And it does come with a ripping 2560 watt hours. This battery is made in China and they do include a manual as well as not those, those ones not included. Those M8 bolts, set of two, actually two pair. I wanna go through that really quick because uh, I saw something which is quite interesting. They do have, I would say probably one, two, no, what is it? One, two, three pages, which are just purely in English. When you open here the first page, I mean, they have different languages here, obviously. Pretty straightforward, what's cool, you see the dimensions, which are put here below as well. As well as they say prismatic, lithium ion phosphate cells, longer cycle life and much more safety. They put in the first sentence. The design is an ABS container. It has minus 20 to plus 55 Celsius widely temperature range. And we can already see the entire enclosure. The ABS container it comes with those nylon straps here on the side, which has a plastic handle so you can carry it. And then we have on the other page, here's a screenshot, hopefully you can see it. We have the nominal voltage of 25.6 and we have a uh, nominal capacity, amp hour 100, 2560 watt hours. And here are the product dimension for confirmation as well as the product weight, plus minus in uh, 0.5 kilogram. Now the maximum charging current is 100 amp hours. And that's interesting here, charge mode. And I think that's just a typo because they also offer different 12 volt batteries, but here um, at 0.2C to 14.6 volts. Um, so I guess it refers just to the 12 volt battery what they also offer. Charging voltage, ideally 29.2, and the max discharge current is 100 amp. So pretty basic numbers, I feel like here. And the end of discharge voltage is 22.4. It should be. Then protection class, IP64, and I, have to, I don't have to go through those ones. Pretty down there, BMS function and protection. Protection is the interesting part, I feel like. Over voltage, low voltage, over current, over temperature, so high temperature as well as low temperature short circuit. So I would read it as and understand it as low temperature and high temperature protection, but we'll take it apart and see if that's accurate. And then we can also see on the second page, um, the connection parallel connection series. That's interesting. So they say they have a maximum of four batteries in parallel, but only maximum of two batteries in series. You wanna to get to a 48 volt package, I assume that's that's what it is here. But that's basically it. The next page is already new language. So there's not a lot more to talk about this battery. What's important to see in general, this housing is very slim. So compared to a 12 volt 200 amp hour, I also have the housing is wider. It's not double, but it's wider. So that's quite interesting. But it also comes with the orange black housing. So this one seems to be everything clued on with a sticker or something like that. And it looks like, we'll see it in a second, that we might be able to pop them open and uh, just use the bolts to open it up. We'll figure that out in a second. I think it was, somewhere was advertised uh, that there's a rubber um, gasket inside. So we'll also check on that. First of all, capacity test, and then we'll open it up. Okay, now we're starting with the capacity test. And I just charged it up one more time just to make sure the battery is on the fullest possible. And behind here, you can see there we have the JSD Solar 24 volt amp, 100 amp hour battery. And we do have it on a resting voltage of 26.57 uh, and falling. Let me reset everything. And I think the only thing what's missing is turn on the inverter and let's get started. All right, ramping up, it's 19 amps, a little less than 0.2C. I'll let it run when we're done with the tests. I'll let you know what the battery is capable of. All right, 
Looks like we are hitting. All right, looks like we missed the 100 amp hour. The capacity tests, unfortunately, it failed. Let's move on with uh, what's inside and see how the quality build of the entire battery looks like. So coming back from the capacity test, which sadly didn't pass. I didn't do a second run this time because um, when I did it last time, it also didn't pass. So I'm a little bit below and short of 100 amp hours at the 24 volts. Uh, still, it's close, but always you would like to see, of course, at least 100 amp hours and not below when you buy it because in the future it will just degrade over time. So next we'll open up the battery and then we'll take a look inside. Okay, as always, somehow we open it up. This one should be pretty easy and I like it. They have a quality seal even over here, which is pretty cool to see. And of course I smashed that, so no chance to get money back. There's already a smell coming out. I can smell it, you're probably not, but no worries. So now, just make sure I'm not dropping all of the bolts, but here we are. First thing I can see already, there is a rubber gasket in here over there. I don't want to destroy it, but here it is. White rubber gasket, pretty nice to see. I can definitely confirm that, that's really nice. All right, the first thing what I can see here, I'm shocked. <laughs> It looks good, it looks organized. At least it looks very organized and clean here. We can see um, this, this cable tie here to organize all the little uh, balance leads it looks like in here. Pretty nice and solid. I'll take it out in a second, but this, is, this looks already so nice. Okay, what we also can see, there seems to be some kind of um, serial number, I guess. It's cool to see. What we also can see is below here, negative, so the ter negative terminal, but also the positive they use a rubber boot up here I guess when you take this off you might be able to adjust yeah it's a bolt underneath so that's cool um, you can actually unbolt it so kind of maintainable if you need to for whatever reason let me try to get it out because I think that's something which is pretty, will be very interesting to see oh yeah we were able to get it out look at this there's a big blob of clue so it was not because of the weight it pressed it out, I'm pretty sure. What we, oh, what's interesting. Oh, we got one epoxy board just uh, put on one side. We'll take a look at that. Oh yeah, when I lay it flat like this. That's cool, that's perfect. So we see a lot. Ah, nice and organized. Okay, so maturity of the weight might be not only the cells obviously, but also because of this cage they're using. And actually they could have gotten it even smaller, but they have space over here for the BMS on this side and here on this side, there's nothing. It's just pressing them in. Expansion and extraction is little to nothing possible, I guess. Even though you can see in between there are, it wears an epoxy board, a yellow board, which I just showed. And the other one yellow is on top of here, just to protect it. I guess against the plastic housing to not rub against it or something like that. I would assume so we can see all those terminals they're actually bolted on not welded and they all have this wrap i guess clue or something on it so we can see the main positive over here the main negative over here which goes into the bms which i show you in a second as well we can see we actually can see the um, qr codes here on all cells that's also really nice so everything looks to be pretty nice and organized. The cells are pretty long over here and they're standing on, on this side. So the prismatic cells in this case, nice and organized. They have the bus bars pretty thick. They don't have any um, way to extract or expand, but it's also compressed everything. So I highly doubt that this will happen at all, even though it might be good for the cells. Every cell you can see um, is able to breathe if necessary. So it's not an enclosed system. And then as mentioned, we do have one wire going over here. We do have hydraulic crimps, or it's actually two wires going over there. And it is uh, it's two eight gauge wires here on the positive side. And on the negative to the terminal, it's also two eight gauge wires. Also, also hydraulic crimped. And the small wires here, they look pretty good as well. 
nothing's wiggling around nice and solid i do like that it actually oh, actually funny there's one wire a little bit too long <laughs> that's why it's sticking out a little bit uh, i like that they even they clued on some cable ties to organize and make it very nice here on the side i mean how can you say that who's doing that i assume they could have saved also a little more weight if they would not not have used this uh this case but it makes it really nice and organized so that's that's a huge plus the next we want to look at is the bms and i try to get it at the best possible angle for you so here's the bms down here it's a jbd bms for eight cells 100 amp hour and you can see to the main positive of the cells they're going into the bms which is by the way pretty small when you look at it and then we're going out here so up to the terminal and what else can we see we see a pretty sure that's a high temperature switch over here which we'll test but that's pretty much it i don't see any other sensor or probe switch no it doesn't look like no there's no no there's nothing else so i thought it would have a low temp um cutoff but it it mentioned it already in the manual so the wording was sort of phrasing was a little weird low temperature short circuit so that's something which I have not read and I do not know what they mean with that. Maybe you have an idea what it means or what they want to say with it. So other than that, I will take this off and uh, we'll do a high temp cutoff test. And then uh, I don't want to take it more apart. This, is, this looks really nice, good organized, well engineered, I want to say. It's very, very nice to see. They even put some of this, I guess, clue, whatever that is over here. On all bolts they wanted to do that that it's not moving i guess as well let me get the setup and then i will do the high temp cutoff test okay i just set it up here so you should be able to read this over here on the bench power supply and what we're going to do is now use the heat gun and test it with the high temperature switch if it does shut off while charging to avoid the battery to be damaged so i got the high temperature switch out here starting power supply and let's see I heard already clicking it just stopped let's see how quickly we can get it back on let's see melted the clue and Back on it's not because of my cold hands because they're not super cold but it's going back on that's nice to see and that's exactly how it should be we successfully tested the high temp cutoff we tested the capacity we looked at the build quality which is in my opinion really nice to see and really well thought out and you can assemble and disassemble actually everything in case you would just want to buy it and then take it apart um, but it's up to you obviously it looks good in my opinion if you see anything which you don't think it looks good at all um too much glue too little glue any complaints please let me know i'm curious about that part but um, as of what i can see from chase d solar they did a great job they really put it together professionally and very solid and well engineered you could not even make it a little thin in my opinion um that's something which would be very cool to see even because they have space here but of course you also don't want to have it too compressed at the end but the, the trend is definitely going into smaller, smaller batteries, especially when you see the Group 24, 12 volt, 100 amp hour batteries, and they actually are just half of the size of just the battery pack. So there's there's a lot of potential in my opinion, or even seeing, um, looking at the pouch cells, which is definitely different, but I've seen there is a lot of stuff coming. So I'm really curious about that as well. There are different manufacturers using more pouch cells. So I'm curious about those ones and I can't wait to look at them as well. But Chase D Solar is doing a great job. I would love to see also more of their batteries to see if the build quality is throughout the entire products um, the same so let me know in the comments what you think about this please subscribe if you like that stuff and uh, let me know in the comment section as well if you want to see something else and if you would buy this battery thanks for watching Cheers.